Uh, this is the uh, Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. How? Oh. Well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. And he comes to my door. And yes. And uh, said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm a, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. where, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. On January 23, 2014, a YouTube channel named Creepy Paste uploaded an unsettling 911 call of an elderly woman identified as Ruth. Ruth sounds in distress as she explains that a strange man is loitering around her property and preparing to possibly break into her home. The video of the call currently has over 613,000 views and has been uploaded on multiple YouTube channels that commonly feature disturbing true crime content and compilations. The actual origin of the video remains unknown and the initial YouTube user that uploaded the call hasn't been active in over five years. In the call, an elderly woman identifies herself as Ruth. Her last name censored for privacy reasons. It is widely believed her last name was Price, Dugas, or a combination of both. She begins to give her exact location when the dispatcher cuts her off to ask what her problem is. What's the problem, ma'am? This might be an attempt from the operator to calm Ruth down, but unfortunately, the interruption costs Ruth her life. Ruth expresses concern about a suspicious man prowling around her property, looking for either an apartment or a man who Ruth is unfamiliar with. Oh, well, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. Oh. Well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. The operator asks where the man currently is, and Ruth says she doesn't know his current whereabouts. Mm -hmm. okay. where, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. Seconds pass as silence fills the air with concern and confusion as Ruth hesitates to formulate complete sentences and is clearly distracted with the unusual activity occurring in her home. And he comes to my door and Yes. And uh, said he's uh, looking for an apartment. She expresses fear as she has an apartment in the back of her home that has a separate entrance and is adamant about the fact that she lives all alone. So I'm, I live alone and I'm an old lady. At this point in the call, the brevity of the pauses become more and more frequent and the discomfort becomes more noticeable. And he comes to my door and. Yes. And. Uh, there's a distant thud on the caller's end that's difficult to discern right after the 30 second mark, followed by a disoriented Ruth sounding distracted and focused on something or someone else in the room. Then suddenly, the line is filled with the gut wrenching and horrifying scream from the elderly patron. She shrieks for help, followed by unsettling gasps for air before the phone line abruptly cuts off. The video ends abruptly with no further explanation. The caller is allegedly reported to be killed by a prowler while the operator helplessly listens to the haunting shrieks of Ruth, presumably being suffocated to death. With the mystery surrounding the origin of the call, the video has sparked much debate amongst true crime and horror enthusiasts alike as to whether or not the call is 100% authentic. In the past five years, the video has become one of the most shared and talked about 911 calls on YouTube and is commonly featured in the most disturbing phone call compilations and 911 call reaction videos. And it's not difficult to see why it sparked such morbid curiosity. With its haunting dialogue and end-of-life circumstances, many true crime fans have become dedicated with finding more information on the insidious audio recording. Although the recording itself is less than a minute long, it is particularly chilling to hear the absolute terror in the woman's screams moments before her life is taken from her. So after six years, did the call actually take place with the aforementioned 
aforementioned circumstances, and was Ruth Price even a real person? After scouring the internet, I was able to find relevant obituaries, dispatcher message board posts, Reddit forum posts, Google Earth Street View images, property records, and pertinent news articles that will allow you to deductively decide for yourself whether the 911 call with Ruth Price is actually real or if it's a very convincing fake. I'm going to count down the list by starting with the scenario that I believe is the easiest to debunk. Starting with the case of Ruth Pelk. Ruth Pelk is a familiar name that is often associated and mistaken with the Ruth Price case. Although similar in circumstances in which both victims were involved in a fatal home invasion, the similarities start and stop there as Ruth Pelk was killed by a group of three teenage girls on May 14, 1985 in Gary, Indiana. The culprit who stabbed Ruth Pelk a staggering 33 times with a butcher knife was Paula Cooper, a 15-year-old teenage girl with a history of sexual and physical abuse who had previous brushings with the law. A year after the murder, Cooper was sentenced to death on July 11, 1986. In 1989, her sentence was changed to 60 years in prison before finally on June 17, 2013, Cooper was released from the Rockville Correctional Facility. On May 26, 2015, she was found dead of an apparent suicide. Paula Cooper shot herself in the head 28 years after taking the life of Ruth Pelk. Although the date of Ruth Pelk's death does match the time frame in which the audio call was supposedly recorded, the crime involving the three teenage girls rules out the possibility of Ruth Pelk being the Ruth Price we hear on the now infamous 911 call. Ruth clearly and unmistakably identifies a man, and only one, loitering around her property prior to her fatal home invasion. Oh, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. With that said, it's safe to say that there is no connection between the murder of Ruth Pelk and the murder of Ruth Price. The second theory involves Virgie Ruth Price Wheeler. This individual's portrait picture is widely used in multiple thumbnails and news articles that feature the late Ruth Price from the 911 call. After using Google search images and searching for the term Ruth Price 911 call, I clicked on the first image identified as the Ruth Price from the 911 case. The image takes you to an article written on medium.com by Catacombs of Truth in May of 2019. On the medium.com website, you can scroll beneath the alleged image of Ruth and the link will redirect you to a Spanish version of the A&E television website with a play button featuring the audio call. This is the only trail I was able to find in regards to the origin of the portrait image until I went back to Google Images and searched again. If you scroll back and notice on the first set of search results for Ruth Price 911 call, there is an identical portrait picture of Ruth Price with a link to an obituary website beneath the picture for the medium.com article. The obituary website is part of the Bowling Green Kentucky Daily News articles and states that Virgie Ruth Wheeler Price died on October 6, 2015. The original video for the 911 call was uploaded on January 23, 2014. Not only that, it also mentions that Vergi served as a postal service worker for over 20 years and passed away in her residence. The Ruth Price on the call states she lives alone and has an apartment in the back, which makes her profession presumably a landlord to her tenants. The date of the video posted on YouTube in 2014 and the date of Vergi Ruth Price's death in 2015 rule out any possibility of coinciding identity. Although this isn't the same Ruth Price, Bergie's portrait is now mistakenly featured in the majority of the videos and news articles linking you to Ruth's 911 call. Theory number three brings us to Ruth Owen Price. There is an obituary for a Ruth Owen Price found on findagrave.com whose death date chronologically coincides with the death date of our Ruth Price. Ruth Owen Price's tombstone states that she was born in 1908 and died in 1985. Assuming this is the same Ruth from the call, she would have been about 80 years old at the time of the incident. The grave site also dons the name of a man who was born in 1905 and died in 1951. Could this be Ruth's husband whose untimely passing made her a susceptible widow during the time of the attack? The Ruth Price in the call states that she is an old woman that lives alone, and the tombstone belonging to Ruth Owen Price from Polk County, Missouri is commonly shared online as belonging to the Ruth Price from the 911 call. Ruth Owen Price did pass away on September 1st, 1988, but according to a newspaper article obituary, she passed away peacefully in a hospital named Cox Medical Center North, located in Springfield, Missouri. This integral piece of information allows us to eliminate Ruth Owen Price from Polk County, Missouri as being the Ruth Price from the call. 
Theory number four is our most controversial and in-depth theory involving the fabrication of the audio call for dispatcher training purposes. Considering the disturbing and unsettling nature of the recording, it seems unusual that someone would be reportedly killed in such a vicious manner without there being any news articles or video clips from local news stations covering the incident. Surely this type of violent murder would generate media attention and we would have more information or details regarding who the woman was, what actually happened, and whether or not the perpetrator was apprehended. The lack of any official police reports about this case is the strongest argument against its authenticity and instills reasonable doubt as to whether the call is 100% genuine. Other people have commented on the ineptitude of the 911 operator as she interrupts the caller before Ruth can provide her address. Uh, this is uh, Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? The dispatcher fails to ask consistent follow-up questions and is completely silent and aloof during the fatal altercation. This unusual behavior conjures up the possibility of the recording being fabricated and used as a training resource for 911 dispatchers on how not to conduct a potentially fatal crisis call. If the Ruth Price 911 call was indeed falsified, then what would have been its purpose? Could it have been staged dialogue designed to teach call operators what not to do? And if so, why was the dialogue so brief? There are barely 30 seconds of interaction before the intruder attacks and all communication is cut off. This provides limited opportunities for learning by the trainees. There were several users online that also debunked the legitimacy of the call's authenticity as they claimed it is illegal to release a 911 call to the public which records someone's death. This law may vary from state to state, but it wouldn't be impossible for a 911 dispatcher to get their hands on the audio and release it for whatever reason as we have seen multiple times with various 911 calls depicting brutal deaths posted all over YouTube. One individual posted on a Reddit forum that although the call is used for training purposes, it is 100% genuine and was played for him during the early 1990s as part of a training exercise for 911 dispatchers. You want to remember the 1990s timeline as it relates to the number one possible theory revealed later in the video. An individual with the username HNDLC3 posted on a public forum in officer.com in June of 2002 stating that the Ruth Price 911 call was played during dispatcher class. The man claims, I've heard this recording before. This is the tape that has stuck with me these last few years. It has reminded me not to treat every call as routine. During my dispatcher class, our instructor pointed out how the dispatcher sounded disinterested in this lady's address. Had she not cut her off from giving her the address, the police may have been there sooner. I don't know if the agency had ANI, but our instructor said that it took a while to find her and it was obviously too late. The same poster later states that the prowler was never apprehended. This assertion that the recording is used as part of a training exercise for new emergency call handlers has been corroborated by a second online source. But since these sources aren't verified or credible, we can't say with absolute certainty that the call is genuine and not fabricated. All information provided by these individuals supports the legitimacy of the 911 call being authentic and not falsified for training purposes. The earliest archive I was able to find of this audio file was from June of 2001 on a website called The Marksman. This webpage details what happened to Ruth Price and includes three different files of this recording. The page makes it clear this audio recording is very real. Now to be fair, it's pretty clear this website is obviously a pro-gun site as they have a section talking about how things would have been different if Ruth had a gun. So. This person would have a motive to push this as real, even if it weren't. I don't think this is the case though. This website does list other brutal pictures of murders that have been confirmed as real, so that establishes some degree of reliability. But most importantly, on the page depicting the Ruth 911 call, they actually list a source for it at the bottom. It says, this audio was provided by 911emergency.com. This website is no longer up, but it was a website filled with 911 resources. This included 911 training, as well as an archive of real 911 calls. Because this website has been defunct for so long, it's hard to find much more information about it, but this definitely points in the direction of this call being real. I emailed a couple of the contact emails listed on there, and I'm hoping to receive a response. 
I can leave you with this last piece of information though. A user on Reddit left a useful comment saying there was a 4chan thread a while back that spent months investigating this call. They concluded that the call was real, along with all the information in the call, but the audio was only a reenactment of the exact transcript used for training. Apparently, this information was gathered by speaking to several 911 training companies and being told the same thing from all of them. Of course, there's no archive of that thread, so we don't know how accurate that information is. I have, however, taken to emailing multiple 911 training centers for any information regarding this. I've only heard back from a few so far, and they've all told me they've never heard of this call before. This doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't real, it just means that these particular centers never used this call. If I get any useful information from other training centers, I'll definitely make an update video. Overall, given what we know now, I would say I'm definitely leaning toward this being real. The evidence pointing to this being authentic is enough to satisfy my skepticism for now. The fifth, final, and in my opinion, strongest possible theory involves Ruth M. Price, who passed away on May 13, 1994, in El Cajon, San Diego County, California, at exactly 80 years old. On alternative versions of the audio call, you can hear Ruth begin to give out the address of 387735th Street. Uh, this is the uh, Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? The actual audio of her giving out her address is censored on the majority of the versions found online. This is uh, Ruth. <laughs> What's the problem, ma'am? I looked up possible addresses for 3877 35th Street in San Diego County to see if any houses match the description of the information given by the caller. Keeping in mind that there is one Ruth Price who passed away in San Diego County in 1994, it would be a very bizarre coincidence that the address for the 3877 35th Street address matched a potential home in the area with the details given by Ruth over the 911 call. We know Ruth lives alone and has an apartment in the back. Oh, well, there's some guy been, uh Checking the place out. Well, well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. When doing a Google Earth Street image, the 387735th Street address in San Diego, California takes us to a one-story home with what looks like a separate unit attached to the back of the property. The most eerie and bone-chilling coincidence when toggling over to the street view on Google Earth is realizing just how susceptible the homeowner is to a break-in. Directly next to the 387735th Street property is a 7-Eleven with an alleyway that allows direct access to the back of the property directly off the street. This home and neighborhood are also in the corner of a very busy and primarily industrial intersection. This would allow for a constant flow of pedestrians with potentially evil intentions to walk by and spectate any homes they believe to be empty. Ruth states in the call that the man at her home was looking for someone she's never heard of. Oh, well, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. Well, well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. This sounds like a cover-up and decoy from the fact that the man was more than likely walking in right off the street into the alleyway that led to Ruth's house right off the busy intersection. You can clearly see the attached unit or apartment behind the main house on Google Earth search image results. Property records also show that the last date of purchase for this home was in 1988 for $79,000 and the home has not been sold since. It's extremely unusual that a house located in the heart of a city like San Diego isn't sold or listed after almost 30 years years of inactivity considering the appreciation of the home's value. This leads me to believe that Ruth's family more than likely owns the house to this day and it was probably purchased outright back in 1988 prior to Ruth's death in 1994. My educated guess is that the man who eventually goes on to kill Ruth was walking down an alley or street next to the 7-Eleven and noticed the first home on the corner of the street with the attached unit. It would make sense for him to knock on the door to see if anyone lived in the residence before attempting to break in. When he sees Ruth's age and vulnerability, he more than likely takes it upon himself to make up an alibi of looking for an apartment or friend before leaving Ruth alone, only to return moments later to force himself into Ruth's home while Ruth is on the call to 911, effectively killing her via asphyxiation. And he comes to my door and, yeah. and uh, said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm, I live alone and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. I'm where where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. <laughs> I 
personally believe that the 911 call audio we hear are the genuine final moments of Ruth Price's life. The dispatcher more than likely recorded the call for quality assurance purposes and the infamous call is now used as a cautionary tale to avoid future scenarios with similar outcomes. More than likely, a fellow dispatcher, IT computer specialist, or someone working in records and evidence could have potentially found and leaked the audio of the 911 call, which only adds mystery and allure to the origination of the call. I don't believe this call was strategically recorded, fabricated, or rehearsed due to the following reasons. Ruth's speech pattern seems very natural, often sporadic and audibly distraught. She sometimes starts speaking and then fails to form complete sentences as if she's distracted by suspicious noises in the background. Yes, and, uh, Shetty's, uh, looking for an apartment. And after listening to the call numerous times and analyzing the tone of voice and the delayed interaction, the flow of the conversation seems to be very authentic. And particularly when Ruth is asked if she knows where the man is and she answers, I don't, uh, I have no idea. Where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. It is very unlikely that a mistake like that would have made its way to the final edit of a rehearsed call if it was intended as a learning exercise. Ruth often begins a sentence, then corrects herself and pauses for an uncomfortable amount of time, which would all be inconducive to the lesson being taught to the dispatcher trainees. With all that said, my final educated assessment on the origination and authenticity of the call is that the call is 100% real and features the murder and death of the elderly Ruth Price. This recording was more than likely confidential and was intended for internal training purposes only. Since Ruth M. Price passed away in 1994, the timeline fits the alleged recording date of the call, which was believed to have happened in the late 80s or early 90s. It is hard to determine where the leak originated from, but I believe someone working in evidence or access to dispatcher calls released the tape out of morbid entertainment. This is a similar situation to when those horrific pictures of Portia girl were leaked by County Highway Patrol of her fatal car accident where her head was nearly decapitated. The story behind Ruth Price's 911 call is elusive and has evidence pointing towards both its authenticity and its forgery. With the facts that are available, we ruled out the possibility with absolute certainty that the caller is not Ruth Pelk, Virgie Ruth Wheeler Price, or Ruth Owen Price, which only leaves us with the option of fabricated recordings used for police dispatcher trainees or that the Ruth M. Price from El Cajon, San Diego County, California is in fact the woman on the call who met her untimely demise in 1994. This tape could have been a training tool intended to stick with the dispatcher to help them understand the time sensitivity and deadly consequences that could have happened as a result of not immediately asking for the caller's location. Unfortunately, unlike a good mystery story, there are no definitive answers as to how the call made its way onto the internet. Any individual willing to take credit for the leak would more than likely face retaliation from law enforcement and be fined accordingly. If the recording is genuine, then the lack of credible information online is unusual and surprising given the circumstances of the murder. The audio could be a non-fictional training resource intended to stick with the dispatcher to help them understand the time sensitivity and deadly consequences that could happen as a result of not immediately asking for the caller's location. The Ruth Price 911 call remains a haunting mystery which will likely live on to disturb and stay with all those who hear it for many years to come. Uh, this is the Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been... Um, checking the place out. How? Oh. Well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. And he comes to my door. And yes. And, uh, said he's, uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. where, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>